Hello, and uh, welcome to another edition of In the Spotlight with Commissioner Jeffrey Mims. Uh, today we have as my guest Mr. Eric Bradley. Hey, here, Mr. Bradley uh, has one of those very important titles here, um, Cyber Security Liaison at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. You know, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Doing great. Good. Hey, before we jump into um, uh, our interview, I'd like to have you explain to us what does a cyber security liaison do? What, does, uh, what, what are you doing every day? Basically, my day-to-day -day operations is to ensure that our weapon systems around the world at our local bases are certified and accredited, basically mm -hmm. meaning that they are secure mm -hmm. to perform their duties. So okay. that, basically, that's what a cybersecurity liaison do. Okay. Uh, that's very challenging right now based upon some of the terror issues that are happening across yes. the nation yes. and across the world. Right. Um, has that uh, had a, a major impact as we try to escalate our security forces across the world? Yes, it has. A significant mm -hmm. impact. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Yo, um, what else have you been doing here? I understand, as I look at this, I know you're from Dayton, Ohio. That's I, correct. I remember seeing you uh, way back in high school. You graduated from Wilbright High School in 1980. Yes. Okay. Uh, what did you do while you were in school? While in high school? Yes, sir. Well, proud to say that I achieved both academically and, and athletically in high school. I was a member of the National Honor Society for two years. Okay. Um, Three-year starter, varsity basketball player. Uh, a little all-city action, too, huh? Yeah, two-year all two-city all recipient. All area? Uh, all area. All greater Dayton? All greater Dayton. Uh, City League Player of the Year in 1979? That's correct. The busy brother, aren't you? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Had a lot of fun back then. Played with a lot of guys. Uh, had some teammates that had done extremely well. Played with uh, Cedric Tony, who went on to play in the NBA. Right. Played with Gary Worthy. Played professionally in the USFL, mm -hmm. so uh, it was a great experience for me. Okay. And uh, college, your college background? College back, great background, uh, ended up going to Eastern Arizona Junior College for a year. Mm -hmm. While out there, I was selected as the uh, freshman of the year in the Arizona Junior College. My assistant coach got the uh, head coaching job at Northern Arizona, so he took me up to, up to Flagstaff with him, so I ended my career up in Flagstaff. In the cold in Arizona, there beautiful, Flagstaff? Beautiful, yeah. Flagstaff, elevation, 7,200 7, feet. People don't realize it snows more out there than it does here. Okay. okay. But uh, beautiful country, bald eagles soaring, elk everywhere. So if you hadn't seen that part of the country, I highly suggest you try to get out there and see, mm -hmm. see that northern Arizona, big okay. sky country. Okay. Okay. Now, did you have any um, aspirations to, to uh, go pro? Yeah, I think we all, I think we all did, you know, as youngsters, but yeah. there comes a point in your life you start realizing that's not going to happen, mm -hmm. and then you start hunkering down on the academics and, and relationships. You know, one thing about playing college sports, you get to go a lot of places, meet a lot of people, and it starts to open up a lot of doors for you. Right. Uh, probably the biggest impact I had was in high school was my uh, guidance counselor, Emily Isaacs. Mm -hmm. I think she was at Roosevelt, and she went over to Weber Wright. My junior year, she came and pulled some of us out of class. I think I was the only young man. So she said she had a program for us at Wright Pat that she wanted us to uh, participate in. And I told her, I said, I want no part of it. I said, I'm mm. playing basketball all summer. And that's <laughs> where my mind was. Yeah. So she turned to me and said, you're going to be in this program. I said, no, I'm not. She said, I'm going to call your mom. So anyway, they, they put me in a program. Long story short. That same program that she put me in in high school ended up being a 30-year career, 30-year uh, civil service career for me. Okay. So that's just an instance where someone saw something, saw an opportunity for you that you don't always see as a youngster. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate her to this day for that. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, I guess you actually sort of underscored the importance of the involvement in terms of extracurricular activities in school, uh, where you also had a strong support system and I know from your coaches and parents and uh, teachers and advisors to make sure your grades were, were tight the way they were supposed to be as right. far as eligibility and, and other things as far as those cons are right. concerned. The, um, the challenge that we have sometimes today is that while we look at research, that clearly indicates that those young people who are involved in activities uh, with the school, they pick up additional support systems that move them not just academically or not just as far as that particular activity is concerned, 
but they gain a whole lot of uh, knowledge and skills to help them move through society and make a positive contribution. Uh, can you talk about that from your perspective? I mean, you hinted on it a little bit there, but as we look at young people today, what do you think we need to do to try to make sure they have some of those same type of uh, opportunities? I'm not a big favorite of GPA. Uh, what I'd like grade to see, point average grade issue? point average. Okay. What I'd rather see, I'd rather see us monitor kids towards progression, towards graduation. Mm -hmm. If kid, a lot of times kids get off to bad starts, but if we see that they're constantly improving and doing the right thing, you know, socialize with the right individuals, I think in the end it's going to be positive. Okay. So uh, I just kind of think the GPA is kind of an overrated, uh, an overrated uh, entity that we tend to measure our kids' success by. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to coach at Patterson High School for 15 years. Okay. Had an opportunity to, to impact a lot of young kids. So I've been on both sides. I've been impacted, and I also have, have helped impact a lot of other kids, young people. But uh, that's the primary thing I think we need to do. We need to just make sure. Because a lot of times our GPA, it, it eliminates kids from being around that positive right. circle that we talked about. Right, right. You know, I was uh, at a program last week at Belmont High School where they looked at the uh, young people who were involved in their ROTC program. And uh, in that entire school, 22% of the children are involved in the ROTC program. And they're also involved in athletics. They're involved in honor society. In fact, I think they mentioned that 95% um, of them are involved in their honor society. They're also involved in terms of having the 100% uh, of them who are seniors graduate. You know, they're doing extremely well as far as their attendance. I think they're like 98, 99% attendance. And they talked about how they support each other. Mm -hmm. now, these are the young people in terms of their goals and aspirations. And, and I know if you talked about those things for yourself, and we see, again, what research says in terms of how these things benefit our young people. Right. Yep. Yep. So I think it's also evident, I had a chance to coach at Stivers for a few years, and while at Stivers we played a lot of the smaller rural schools like the um, Versailles and Coldwaters and mm -hmm. Salinas. And those kind of communities, you know, they're, they're small districts, but their kids, like you just said, they participate in everything. Yeah. I mean, they're three sport athletes and all type of school activities. Parents are actively involved, and they do extremely well. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we need to take a look at those districts. Okay. Sometimes we always try, I think we try to shape ourselves after, after the suburban districts. But I think some of these smaller communities, I've, I've been very impressed good with how well they, yeah. how they shape their kids. Yeah. You know, and, and your son, let's see, talk about your son. I know I, I had the pleasure of working with him in the Jack and Jill Bortillion. Uh, I forget what year did he come out? Um, uh, 11, 2011. 2011? Yes. Okay. And he's doing well, played basketball. and, yes. and uh So you've seen it on several fronts. Yes. You work with other people's children. You've seen your children be successful, your child be successful, and you certainly are a product yourself. Right. You know, help me um, you know, tie that into some of the activities that you're doing with um, the, the Men of Color initiative. Okay. Um, right now I'm serving as president of the um, Cap Opposite Fraternity Incorporated, as I stated okay. earlier. And I'm also the... That, um, that, that, uh, 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 justifies why you're wearing that jacket. Yes, it does. Shield. Yes, it I think, does. I, yes, think it I found does. one of those myself <laughs> in the closet. Okay, all right, go ahead. And I'm also vice president of the, the uh, Montgomery County chapter of the National Panhellenic Council. Okay. And uh, under my leadership, I had uh, made a recommendation that all the fraternities get actively involved in the Men of Color Initiative. Mm -hmm. So that, <clears throat> I got to give a shout out to all my fraternal brothers, but uh, William Clark, president of Alpha Phi Alpha, Eric Gilworth and uh, okay. James Fowler, Omega Psi Phi, yeah. Stephen Niffley and uh, Kaylin Chance of uh, Phi Beta Sigma. We're all actively actively engaged in uh, making an impact here in the city. Mm -hmm. And we all have partnered with various high schools. Kai mm -hmm. Five Asides partnered with Dunbar High School. And what we're looking to do is just, um, you know, really make a difference in these young, young folks' lives. Okay. And listening to the young folks, they clearly state that all they want to do is, is be guided right, you know, be supported, and uh, be, there when, be there when they need help. Yeah. So uh, we have a lot of programs uh, that we plan to implement in the schools. Um, Kappa Alpha Psi, here in the Dayton chapter, we have the longest-running Kappa League program in a fraternity. So that's something that we're very proud of. We have a lot of resources nationally 
that we will be bringing to the uh, to the to the effort here in Dayton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know we we got a contribution and a pledge from uh, again one of our fraternity brothers, uh, Mr. Amos Otis of Sobran. Okay, and he's talked about some things that we're trying to do in Dunbar, in giving some uh, recognition and some financial uh, rewards for those young people who have shown progression as far as their grades are concerned. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're gonna, I think they're matching that from first semester to second semester as far as those gains are concerned. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, and if we would go a little bit more detail in terms of what the fraternities are trying to do at the, at the high schools, and I know we met with the fraternity presidents and the members of the Panhellenic Council this past summer, and we all talked about the purpose. We talked about the challenges of what's happening uh, we talked about President Obama's uh, My Brother's Keeper initiative, which he started in February of 2014, which coincided with uh, Mayor Nan Whaley's and the commissioner's uh, decision to support and work with the Dayton Public Schools and with this whole initiative called the City of Learners. And, and our primary reason for looking at that is that we understand that there's no great city with a poor school system and there's no great school system that comes from a poor city. So we have to find ways of, of, of pulling each other up as we work through this process. Now another key issue that we've identified is the fact that we have to, as a city, create a, a, a system so that we have a great pool of workers and potential owners of businesses so that we can make sure that we're having this knowledge base and the, the uh, employment, if we will, employment base of our citizens continue to expand because companies who want to locate or relocate are all looking to come to a city that has qualified workers. Um, can you uh, expound upon that in terms of your thoughts? Is that sort of drive some of your desire to do some things that you're doing from a fraternity perspective? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. And I, and I think our approach is going to be, I mean, often I think we, we take the approach of young people of the bottom-up approach, mm -hmm. that if you do this, you do this, you do this. Again, I feel that all the education in the world is useless without opportunities. Right. So what we want to do, we want to, we want to do bottom-down. We want to start mm -hmm. having kids take a look at, look at these gentlemen out here working on the freeway. Let's take a look at the value of these contracts, the type of jobs that are associated with this contract. Now let's get back with our school district and see what type of resources that we need to put in place to put these young people, to mm -hmm. make these young people compatible or, or qualified in order to take these type of jobs. Yeah. I, I just think we, just, we need to flip that because I think history has shown the bottom-up approach where it's gotten us. Okay. 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 Now, now you graduated from Patterson Co-op at a time with Wright. when, uh, no, Will Wright, okay, but you coached him still at, yes. um, at Patterson, um, Patterson Co-op. Uh, were you there during the time when they had the cooperative program, or did you come it, shortly after? I they came shortly after. Shortly after that, yes. uh, because that was a program that I think um, probably Dayton was probably ahead of its time. Yeah, uh, where they had young people after they had finished or completed their sophomore year, they were involved in a co-op program where they attended school um, for two weeks, and then they worked for two weeks. Right with some partnership with some business or company throughout the community. And at, upon their graduation, they were in a position to keep that job, mm -hmm. go to school part-time if they chose to do so, I'm talking about college uh, or technical school, or they leave, they go to the military or they go to college. And as we look right now, again, talking about how we're trying to move back, if you will, into some type of situation where we have a, I guess, symbolized type programs like that, where we're trying to get more of our young people to get some real work experience while they're actually in high school or maybe even junior high, so that they understand and find a purpose to the educational piece in relationship to life right. and work responsibilities. Right. Uh, does that make any sense to you in terms makes of time? a lot of, of sense. Program? And I'm very familiar with the, the co op program because my brother. Okay. He benefited from that while at Patterson. He graduated in '75. Mm -hmm. and he, I remember he, remember he co-opted over at Dayton Tire. Okay. While he was in school. Okay. So, right. okay. the um, Men of Color program. 
when you were involved in that, let's talk about some of the activities. And I know you spearheaded a lot of things that we did, uh, for example, over at Dunbar. Talk about that day, for example. I think we started, what, 9 o'clock, 9.30 that morning? Right. Yeah. Well, over at Dunbar, what we did, we, we just kind of basically started out by introducing ourselves. Okay. But I think the, the, the biggest impact of the day was that we gave the kids an opportunity to introduce themselves and also mention to us how, how could we help them. Okay. And I think a lot of times when we, when we talk before kids, we're always sharing our story. Right. We never really open the floor up to hear what they really want from us. Okay. What are some of the type of things that they mentioned? Uh, like I said earlier, as far as being guided, you know, being properly guided and advised uh, when they need help to be there for them, you know, yeah. uh, activities, mm -hmm. extracurricular activities. You know, a lot, like you mentioned before, a lot of the activities in our schools have been, uh, have been eliminated. So something that we want to do, we want to be able to take kids on field trips if possible. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about uh, uh, doing some community projects, renovating houses, clean up, recycling, mm -hmm. learning how to take care and appreciate your, your, your community mm -hmm. is very vital, I think. Yeah. The, um, one of the other key pieces of the program, and we didn't talk about that, and I wanted to make sure we mentioned that, as we talk about trying to uh, identify a cohort at each of the high schools, and in, in that cohort, we want to try to work with anywhere from 15 to maybe 50 young men. And to help train them on the conflict mediation skills, you know, how they identify and how to resolve conflict at its lowest level, and then help them understand how to lead, when to lead, how to follow, and how to follow, right. and be a supportive uh, entity as far as that's concerned. And then the next level would be to help train them on being mentors as well and then take them to the elementary schools that feed into the high schools and let them be the kind of mentors with that group of young people that we are trying to be to the older group. Right. Because research has indicated that those young people, sometimes they do a little bit better if the mentor is closer in age range than, than some of us are. Right. It, it takes them sometimes a little bit of time to understand that some of us old guys have a couple of thoughts that make sense, you know, uh, but someone a little bit younger, closer to the age will say it, you know, they'll pick up on it. Now, I'm not sure if their their tone is different or the fact that they're a little bit younger uh, with them that they can try to buy into it a little bit better. But nonetheless, I think coming from a multiple approach and multiple directions, uh, I think is very beneficial as far as that piece is and concerned. I, I agree with that assessment. Because when I got into coaching, I remember when I came, came home from school, and one of my old coaches, he asked me to come down and assist him. <clears throat> and I had no desire to coach. Okay. But when I went down there, I connected instantly with the kids. Okay. And right. I, I've been there ever since, you know. Yeah. So. But I think it was that age that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it, ended up coaching over 25 years. So. Okay. That's a, that's a good career with that. Yeah. And, and that's sort of make you feel young in terms of mm -hmm. how, you, how you're working with them. Yeah. You know, so, um, so what's next on your horizon? I know we're talking about the issues in terms of mental color. I know you, you're very pumped and you're a strong supporter with us and, and organizer with us as far as that piece is concerned. The attorneys, I know you, you talked about them a moment ago and you mentioned the names of the different presidents. Uh, how different are the goals of the fraternities, you know, one versus the other across the, um, across the city? Yeah, I know we have uh, different words, but you know, talk about the goals of the different organizations. I, th I think uh, I think they're very similar. Okay. You know, from from A to Z, I think they're very similar. Uh, we're we're all on, on course with the uh, Men of Color Initiative, as far as the uh, conflict resolution piece, mm -hmm. the uh, mentoring the um, pre K through eight kids. Mm -hmm. But we all have different, like I, said, like I said, we all have different national programs that might vary just a little bit. Right. But uh, I think we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I know when we looked at the um, uh, past history and relationship fraternities when we were in, in, in college, and there's a lot of, you know, competition um, and a lot of it a little playful. And yeah. uh, as we've gotten older and grown up, you know, to be men, you know, we understand that, you know, uh, again, like you said, what we're trying to do is virtually the same thing. Yeah. Same. Yeah. 
Who? But, it, but it's positive competition. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know? very I much mean, so. It, and, and I think the... Uh, I think right now the spirit of, of the Panhellenic Council in Dayton is one of the best in the country. Okay. As far as all the organizations working together. Okay. Uh, we, we get a lot of, when I, while I was president, I got a lot of calls from other cities, mm -hmm. you know, admiring and complimenting, complimenting us on the things that we do here. Yeah. So. Now, uh, now there's another major thing that uh, you guys were involved in as well in terms of um, the Tom Joyner Foundation. Yes. You know, talk about that for a bit. Uh, we thought it would be great to get some, uh, to do something positive, you know, brother, okay. uh, brother Tom Joyner, uh, the TJMS morning crew was on a tour and, uh, we was able to get involved in that. So they came through Dayton. So I rallied all the organizations to, to participate and we ended up raising almost $6,000 worth of scholarship money. And we did that in less than 10 days. Okay. So this is something that we, we hope to do annually and we think next year. We have a little more time for planning that we can, we hope to either maybe triple that amount. Okay. Now, his foundation primarily does what? Uh, it's, it funds young people, young men and women to attend, to attend schools at historical black colleges and universities. Okay. So the money that we raised this year was slated to go towards the students attending Wilberforce and Central State. Okay. And I recall hearing him a few days later on, on his uh, radio show talk about how uh, great of a time he had in yes. Dayton and how the fraternities really stepped up in terms of uh, making the contributions. Yes, to he was. He was, he was very impressed and he was surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that's super. Is there anything else before we close that's uh, hot on your mind that we've missed that you wanted to talk about? If someone to say, who's Eric Bradley, what would you, uh, what would you like to have them remember? I'm, I'm just a guy that, uh, you know, growing up here in Dayton, right up the street here, uh, in the Westwood community. Never forgot where I came from. Okay. Never will. I'm always here and I'm, I'm looking, looking for the best of the folks from Dayton. Okay. Just looking for, looking for the best. And, and we can say the young people and young men who have uh, aspirations of being an athlete, professional, basketball, baseball, football, soccer, whatever, um, that it's fine to have that goal, but understand that there's also the reality of having a backup plan. Yes. Okay. That's um, very true. Because you have degrees from where? I obtained my uh, bachelor's degree from Northern Arizona. Okay. I have a master's from Central Michigan and Xavier University. Okay. Okay. So, so it shows that uh, your hard work in all those areas. I know a friend of mine, Dr. Alonzo Patterson, once mentioned uh, to the Ohio Senate, we were talking about some finance issues and the importance of extracurricular activities, that his desire to be on the basketball team and have a role on the basketball team caused him to practice really, really hard at free throws and ball handling. So the coach would put him in the game at some point in time when it got critical. And that the discipline that he learned through that process helped carry him as far as he needed to go through medical school. And that as he tried to work hard, part-time job, went to college to study, stay on top of his grades, and all the things that nature came a lot from that discipline that he learned in that particular area. And he was a teammate. He was a high school well, teammate, teammate also. Yeah, yeah, remember that. Okay. Okay, well, I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you again, I say to our audience, for tuning in to another version of In the Spotlight with Commissioner Jeffrey Mims. Uh, if you've uh, missed this or you want to share information about this program, you can tune in to our website for www.daytonohio.com. Dot gov. And thank you again, Mr. Bradley. Thank you. Okay, appreciate it. All right. It. Okay.